so let's get started welcome back and uh, hope everybody is healthy and in spirit because we need to be optimistic and we need to we will get over it that's for sure and before we get started as always let's pray and put forth our gratitude towards all these healthcare workers and every other people who are on the front end and fighting this battle for us i have no idea without their support and help right from everybody right the people are bringing grocery to us uh, making sure that the electricity is there the internet is there uh, that's what keeps us moving in this pandemic so there are so many people contributing uh, in this work directly and indirectly uh, this need to be acknowledged and we need to be sensitive to this work and uh, we should be thankful to all their efforts so uh, i really wanted to say that uh, somebody was asking why are you saying this every week every session five times a week uh, i feel that even that is not good enough <laughs> every moment we get we should be sensitive to that uh, feeling and i feel that this is the real thanksgiving rather than symbolically celebrating thanksgiving um, in the third chapter krishna expresses this idea very well the real thanksgiving is the sensitivity towards the other being and the ten sensitivity towards the universe because you could see a perfect order in everywhere and all the creatures in the universe all the being in the universe living and non living implicitly follow that order only human being try to disturb that order and uh, as a result we get punished also so be sensitive to that natural order of the universe and be sensitive to the other human being be sensitive to everybody like uh, that's a great skill gita is going to teach us in the third chapter and the upcoming chapter and uh, krishna calls this as the thanksgiving that is the real thanksgiving i feel that uh, in every sense so with that why don't we continue our discussion on chapter 7 this is a wonderful chapter because we turn the corner at the beginning of chapter 7 the first six chapter the focus was atma atma means individually who am i that was the inquiry predominantly of course the other topics came but predominantly the focus was who am i krishna is trying to help us to see ourselves properly so that was the first six chapters and in the seventh chapter we turned the corner and krishna started explaining who the absolute reality is so that is the theme of the seventh chapter and this is going to continue till 12th chapter and this will culminate in the expression of bhakti the devotion because as i explained in the beginning of this chapter suppose you wanted to love somebody unconditionally suppose you want to relate with somebody properly you need to know who he is i cannot say that you go and love x that love won't be true love you have to know whom you are loving you have to know why you are loving and you need to know how you are loving and then that feeling comes to you automatically and that is what the idea is so he is going to explain the nature of the absolute in six chapters and at the end he is going to tell this is the real bhakti so that real bhakti you all will be surprised that contradicts lot of our conventional bhakti it doesn't mean that the conventional bhakti is bad i'm not saying that what i'm saying is that what is the higher form of bhakti that is described in the 12th chapter so in this chapter krishna started the teaching by saying that god or absolute has two different nature one is called the para prakriti higher nature and the apara prakriti which is the lower nature and para prakriti is the absolute reality and the apara prakriti means it is the derived nature from the para prakriti and apara prakriti constitutes the entire universe of names and forms 
बिकॉज दपरा प्रकृति कंस्टिट्यूट ऑफ द मैटर सो ऑल द फिजिकल मैटर and all the subtle matter combination of which is the entire names and forms of the universe so that includes all the all the living beings and the non living being living being in the sense their physical body and their subtle body which includes your mind intellect uh, all the ability to perceive ability to active the pancha prana all those things comes under the combination or under the domain of this apara prakriti and when the apara prakriti forms in the form of a living being with a physical and a subtle body the para prakriti or the absolute can get reflected in that and that is how you see sentiency in living being and jiva bhuta maha baho yayetam dharyate jagad we heard that words krishna tells i am i hold the entire universe like a thread uh, that holds the beads in a chain so that we saw and then krishna said so i have a two forms one is the trans transcend form and second one is the immanent form if you remember this is what i was trying to explain a lot with the example of a dream it's a standard teaching methodology in vedanta which is called swapna drishtanta so this methodology we used and we tried to understand what is the immanent nature and what is the uh, transcendent nature so this transcendent nature of the god is beyond our perception beyond our inference beyond our reach but you can always know him through the immanent that is easy so krishna from verse 7 to 12 gave us a few few manifestations in the universe where you can see the imminent nature of that higher reality so he said don't think that you don't know me you are seeing you you are seeing me in almost everywhere in the universe so when you taste the water you feel that wetness that is me and when you see the sun and the moon you are experiencing the light everywhere the pradipa and the pradibimba right so we talked about that the self effulgent sun and the reflecting moon both the light are my light right and then all the god whenever you refer whenever you listen to a prayer it doesn't man- matter whether it is a tribal dance or the most complicated vedic ritual all that is ishwara and do you know why what symbolizes this arati whenever you go to a temple you see an arati right you all attend the arati what is the significance of this arati anybody okay so traditionally what happens in south indian temples especially because i am quoting the tantra samuchaya scripture written by parashurama so what they say is your sanctum sanctorium in a traditional temple when the 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 arati is going on or before the arati there is no light no electric light only these diyas or the small uh, oil lamps are there and ideally when you look in front of the sanctum sanctorium you won't see the deity properly right so that time what happens the priest comes in a plate or a whatever it is with a fire like camphor or whatever and what he is showing he is revealing that god to you to the devotee whenever he show that arati what he is doing is he is symbolically revealing that ishwara to you or the god to you so a skillful priest what he does is he just show the eye of the god the hand of the god the leg of the god all that part in a systematic way you can see that trained the peace priest skillful priest who knows what they are doing i'm not talking about all people but this is the principle and then after that the arati is given back to you and you took and uh, put that in your eyes saying that through this knowledge that light symbolically represents the knowledge the scriptures through that scriptures let me see you like this light revealed to you let the teaching reveal your nature to me beautiful concept right this is this is this is the real principle of arati like that every ritual we have has a principle because as i already explained to you 
the laukiya karmas and vaidhya karmas are there and the vaidhya karmas which is the vedic rituals are nothing but a symbolic representation of our vaidhya so laukiya karma so exactly like that every ritual you can relate to some aspect of the um, day to day life without that if you mechanically do the ritual that's a different matter but uh, this is one symbolism so i am the god referred by all the scriptures and i'm this the good sound the sound that pleasing to your ears it is me uh, the manliness of man and the womanliness of women i am the one <coughs> i am the good fragrance you get whenever you go out and the heat and the brilliance of the sun uh, and or the fire and means whenever you see the fire you see that means you you get the heat understand that it is my my being and whenever you see a living being jeeva bhuta mahabahu meaning uh, i am that life force which elements all the all the living being and then uh, all the seed of all being means i am the womb from which all the being comes forth so whenever you see a being you can see the creator of that being is ishwara and intelligence of your intellect is me whenever you see an expression of intelligence it is me then uh, the strength of the strong and one word constraint also used kama rajaka vivarchita only the swatik strength so the strength of a hitler the strength of a mao the strength of a stalin is not ishwara's power but when it is comes for a dharmic purpose the strength of jesus the strength of krishna the strength of vivekananda is ishwara you can see that and the desires aligned with the dharma when you have a desire which is in line with dharma understand that it is me so it can be it can go on and on and on and on but krishna gave at least 14 pointers for us to contemplate and it's not contemplate you need to do the nidityasanam you need to internalize it like don't look the god in the heaven don't look the the god only in the temple whenever you go outside whenever you see any of these features understand and relate to ishwara so this is the topic we covered earlier a couple of verses we covered like uh, every being is born out of me because the sattva rajas tamo all the gunas comes out of me and the combination of that is the entire names and forms i symbolically explained the animals the rakshasas and the devas and the human being four categories i took and uh, uh, animals represents the tamasic rakshasas res- means represents the rajasic predominantly and uh, the devas represents sattvas predominantly and human being is a combination of all all that is coming from me but krishna made a point very clearly they are in me but i am not in them because a good song or a bad song or an ugly song is coming from the audio system but the electricity is not uh, in the goodness of the song and the electricity is not a contributor to the badness of the song miss s chinmayan swami chinmayananda said like the whole the sun doesn't get holier when it shines the ganges water and the sun doesn't get uh, polluted when it falls into a gutter water the sun remains the sun so that is why because without the light you the ganges water or the uh, gutter water is not visible so these are all examples and as i explained earlier always the example has its own limitation so just try to understand from that context only so this is just this much we covered i think i co- means cover we covered up to verse 12 and let's move on uh, continue this discussion but before that any questions tribhir guna mayir bhavaihi e bhisarvam idam jagat mohitam na bhijanati ma me bhyah param avyayam okay so tribhir guna mayir bhavai so the three gunas because of these three gunas what happens api sarvam idam jagat uh, the entire world mohitam tha bhi jadani the entire world is deluded meaning here entire world means 
the entire human beings. That is what it is. Shankaracharya clarifies that in his commentary. So we will see that the entire humanity, because plant, animals and human, even they, they have life, they cannot think beyond a certain level. level. Some of these cannot think and some of them cannot even think properly. So there is no wonder if they don't recognize God. But human being with all these intelligence and all these capacities, why human beings are not recognizing this God? Even every thing in the universe is God. Krishna answers why. These three gunas, whatever we talked, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas, because of their influence, the entire world or the entire humanity, the entire world is symbolically represented for the entire humanity, is deluded. They see the world, but they fail to see who exactly it is the world. So they are deluded and they do not recognize me beyond the imperishable. Because beyond all these names and forms, beyond every, whenever they see the sunlight, they see that as a sunlight. But they are not recognizing that that sunlight is in fact nothing but the supreme. When they taste the water, they feel the wetness, but they don't realize nothing beyond the wetness. So that is what Krishna is saying. Like because of these three gunas, the influence of these three gunas, sattva, rajas and tamas, what happened? The entire humanity is deluded. <coughs> So, na api janati, they don't recognize me properly. Ma me pya, param avyayam, avyayam, I am, avyayam means what? Perishable. Avyayam means not perishable, imperishable. So, they don't recognize, they don't see that infinite reality which gives existence and consciousness to every being. So let's talk about that. So people are deluded by the modifications of this guna. So these gunas, what happens? It is called a sattva, rajas and tamas. These gunas influences all the human being. So here in this verse, only human beings are mentioned. No other beings are mentioned. There is a lack of discrimination between what is eternal and what is non-eternal. So this, so that is the, that is what is that this delusion does. So because of this delusion, they don't recognize two things. What is, at, what is permanent beyond all what you are seeing. So for example, when they see the fragrance or get the fragrance of a flower, they see that as a flower only. They don't go beyond that. So they don't go beyond the non-eternal. There is something which is beyond every non-eternal. There is an eternal. So if I borrow the language of our um, example, they fail to see the clay, even though they see the pot. They fail to see and recognize the water when they see the um, wave or the ocean. They fail to see the gold when they see the gold or golden or moment. So that is what is happening. They, they fail to see the nimitta upadhana karana ananya nimitta ananya adhishtana nimitta upadhana karana. If you remember, that is how we define the uh, para prakriti, right? If you remember, that which is not dependent upon anything, that which is the nimitta karana, the intelligent cause, and that which is the upadhana karana, which is the material cause. They see the creation, but they fail to see the creator. In fact, the creation is nothing but the creator. The create, but what happens? Because of these delusions, because of the influence of these three gunas, I fail to see anything. I fail to see, I, I, I see the world, but I fail to see the God behind that. So I fail to see between Atma and Anatma because I see myself as a limited individual. I think myself as a human body, but I fail to see. In fact, I am not the body. I am the Atman because remember we had this discussion. It means the body is a gadget given to me. The, the, because if you remember the teaching methodology we used in our Vedanta class, 
it is known as drik drishya viveka so the drik drishya viveka clearly tells us the difference between the seer and the seen the subject and the object so the basic definition in the drik drishya viveka is the seer is different from the seen so who is the seer and who is the seen the observer is different from the observed that is the basic principle so by following that principle whenever i see a flower i think i am the seer this physical entity is the seer the flower is the seen in fact when you go deep dive into that rupam drishyam lochanam drik that is the first state like the flower is the seen my eyes are the seer but what exactly is the second level of perception rupam drishyam lochanam drik tat driktum drishyamanasam the image captured by the eye is the seen who is the seer my mind is the seer remember we had that detailed discussion and then the third level of perception is what the chitta vritti or the mental event created by the image in my eye is the seen and who is the seer consciousness so the atma is the real seer everything else is a gadget given to me my mind is a software installed to my uh, physical gadget or the hardware called the body so what happens but i take this hardware and software as myself and i fail to recognize the true atma behind me so this delusion of these three gunas uh, it creates two confusion one is whenever i see the world i fail to see the absolute behind that world and i look upon myself as the uh, the gadget the body mind but i fail to see the atma as my real identity <clears throat> so these two confusion happens and krishna tells that it is due to the influence of this guna and this influence of this guna there is a technical term we call in our scriptures anybody knows that maya have you heard of that term yeah. maya yeah. so maya yeah. It, yeah so this is what this is maya is very complicated term so one of the meaning of maya is this veil of ignorance so it it is because of this maya i see uh, means i fail to see the world i fail to see the god in the world and i fail to see the atma in me so this is what is krishna explains what exactly is the reason of this uh, delusion he tells it is the impact of gunas gunas are sattva rajas and tamas and if you remember i tried to explain this uh, in a little bit um, modern way last week uh, i said like per the ancient world view because remember these theories are formulated based upon the ancient world view if you had created a model now it would have used a different model for example uh, the elemental element theory right so the element theory used in gita and in almost all the scriptures of the world is the five element model if you had used now we would have used a different model that doesn't mean that one model is good and the other model is bad the purpose was to means just to model something and for that to and for you to understand what exactly is a model the model the definition of model itself is the abstract representation of the reality so a model could be in a very high level or the model could can go to the level of detail so this is a very high level model uh, based on the then ancient world view and that is how this pancha bhuta theory came in the sattva rajas tamas theory came in so we can say that upper that ancient world view everything or every being every matter in the world has these this a combination of these three gunas something is predominantly sattva something is predominantly rajas and something is predominantly tamas and something is a mixture of all and this can go in different proportion it can go it it, it can go with the mental temperaments it can go with the characteristics of a an object all that can be modeled by these sattva rajas tamas and if you want more details about this if anybody is curious go to the 14th chapter of the gita and try to read it so you have a entire chapter is dedicated to this uh, this model sattva rajas tamas and one more point is those who are scholarly uh, interest those who have scholar interest this model came from 
uh, another darshana of India, which is called Sankhya. So if you remember, we had six darshanas in the Vedic school. And one of the darshana is called Sankhya. And the Sankhyan thought created the Sattva Raja Tamas model. So essentially, it is it is it can be represented as the uh, one way of looking at it is it can be different way. One of one way of looking at it is like uh, the dirt amount of dirt you have or the um, impurities you have in your mind. Uh, Sattva means it is pure natural. Uh, Rajas means it is hyperactive. And tamas means it is dirt and it is inactive. That is one definition. So depending upon the gunas, influence of the gunas, like how much turbulent is your mind, how much uh, stable is your mind, you may perceive different things. Right? When you are extremely agitated, your perception towards a person would be totally different. Your perception when you are in calm mode. Don't you agree? So, I, like, do you remember uh, when you were kids, uh, you you all, you need to sign the progress report with your parents, mom and dad. When do you take that progress report to them? When they are agitated, mom, do you take that to them? Absolutely not. <laughs> right? The way they see the same fact under different mood is always different. So, the entire behavioral therapy, it's a huge branch of psychology, the modern psychology, is based on this concept. Your feeling is determined based on your mood of the mind or what you think. So what they do in behavioral therapy, they consciously make you think positive. Over a period of time, what do you do? You feel good. So go and read this. This is very interesting. Like this was a really groundbreaking theory, especially the behavioral uh, psychology, uh, because the Freudian young Jung model was slightly different. Freud had a means I'm not criticizing Freud because he's the father of modern psychology as per the theory. So he had a different interpretation of why people are the way they are. And behavioral psychology was a huge blessing to the humanity because thanks to behavioral psychology, a lot of mental diseases are cured now. One thing is the depression. Most of the times these bipolar depression, you can treat it. Uh, so there are means the treatment of this depression is twofold. One is a medication and the other one could other is followed by this therapy because uh, both have two different objectives, but the entire Behavioral therapy is based on this idea. Uh, those who are interested, go and read. It is really, really, really interesting. So what I'm saying is that the, uh, the, the mood of your mind determined by the gunas of your mind is going to give you different moods and perception of the mind. And under their influence, under the Sattva Rajas Tamas, what happens? I see everything, but I fail to see God. I see everything, but I fail to see myself. And I'm operating in a world without understanding this reality. So this is what the explanation of this Krishna. Krishna. So under the influence of these gunas, people fail to see the changeless, changeless reality in the external world and eternal Atma in all beings. And people also fail to understand their own reality. People do not re recognize the absolute reality. The one who is free from all these gunas. Deluded by these modifications, what happens? The people don't recognize the absolute as one who doesn't undergo all these changes. They see the flower, right? So the flower goes away. But... They don't recognize that there is something which is not changing, is supporting all the change. Even, even if you borrow the basic principles of relative theory, right? A change is perceived with respect to a relatively changeless. Correct? Suppose you are driving in, say, turnpike at 65 miles per hour. And uh, another guy is driving on the turnpike in 65 miles per hour and he is drinking coffee, you can see him drinking coffee. 
but imagine why you can see him stationary and drinking coffee because both of you are moving at the same pace but if for you for you to see him changing because for you his position is relatively same as that of yourself for you to see him changing you need to be standing outside then only you can see that uh, his absolute change second scenario imagine that you are going at 35 miles per hour this guy is going at 60 miles per hour what is his speed with respect to you it's only 35 miles per hour so that is the relative velocity concept so this is what krishna is also telling like for any change to happen there has to be a changeless subtractum and uh, everyone uh, even though every human being totally ignorant totally deluded uh, to the presence of this ishura or the god even though it is completely evident in all being and we search for god everywhere but we cannot see him so this is what uh, that verse explains any questions okay yeah from what I heard, uh, people are saying get rid of your uh, tamasic and rajasic uh, guna and mm -hmm. be sattvic. Mm -hmm. But now is Krishna saying go beyond sattvic? Correct. And Correct. He 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 is saying that go beyond swatik. Uh, Rohit ji, there is a verse in Bhagavad Gita which clearly tells us. It tells the second chapter. I believe that it is thirty nine or thirty eight. You may means anybody who has the book, you can refer now. Thirty eight or thirty nine. The verse is. Trigunya Vishaya Veda Nistraigunyo Pavarjuna Nardonto Nitya Sattvasto Mari Yoga Chema Atmavan. There are three gunas prescribed by the Veda. You go beyond that. It doesn't mean that you will be you, you will not have that gunas, but you, you have to see beyond all these gunas. You should not be influenced by any of these gunas. Of course, these gunas will be there, but you have to go beyond it. And uh, there is a detailed discussion what exactly it means and how you can do that later point of time there is a there is a discussion but i believe that this is second chapter verse 38 or 39 i think 38 nobody has gita book okay no problem no problem but this is second chapter second chapter can any if anybody has book can can we just check 38 or 39 second chapter Traigunya Vishaya Veda Nistraigunyo Pavarjuna Nardonto Nitya Sattvastu. There Sattva means it is the Absat, not Sattva. Go beyond these three gunas. That is the ask. Nari Yoga Chema Atma Vanya. Get established in the Atma, your true identity. That's fine. We can. This is the. What are we looking for? 38 or 37 of second chapter. Actually, Rajesh, it is uh, 40, 45. No. Oh, yeah. 38 is Sukhruta. Correct, correct. Sukhruta ke samay krutu hai. La pha la pho jaya jayu. Right. It is 45. You are right. Yeah. It's 45. 45. You are right. My bad. So, for 45, you will see that. Okay. Thanks. Rajesh ji. Yeah. Um, I'm reading the other version also. So the Shankara is talking about six fold changes. What? So is it different from the three fold changes which you are talking? No, about? I'm. Yeah. No. Let me explain. So Shankaracharya is talking about the six fold change of the matter. Correct. So from the birth to death. Birth to death. Asti, jayate, varthate, viparinamate, apakshyate, pranashyati. So people only see that much. So they don't okay. see that the, the there is a permanent thing behind these six fold change that's what okay. and i i'm not talking about the three fold change i'm only talking about the influence of these three gunas and because of the influence of these three gunas in my mind i see somebody born i see somebody growing i see somebody decaying i see somebody is dying but i'm not seeing that there is a permanent component in that so that's what it is. Okay. okay. So one clarification, since you brought up Shankara, Shankara is clarifying one point in this commentary. The key clarification of Shankara in this commentary is 
Krishna uses a word every every ev the entire universe. By the entire universe, he means the entire human being. Oh, okay. Right. So because the human being failed to see the permanence, and they see only the impermanent because of the influence of these three gunas. That's what he was telling. Mm. That is a beautiful clarification by Shankara. And um, I don't know how many of you read Shankara. Uh, if this is your first iteration of Bhagavad Gita study. And once you are confident, uh, I mean, tell me, I can also help you. Uh, if you want to study Gita to the fullest extent, you have to study with the Shankara's commentary. I'm trying to bring up the essentials here, but you have to read the commentary, uh, understand the word by word meaning. That's a totally different experience. So, but Shankara's comment again, again is in Sanskrit, right? Yeah, it is in Sanskrit. You have to ex so but, is a, what Which yeah. version of uh, English translation would you recommend? Honestly, none. Every English translation has its own difficulty. Well, before you learn... Yeah, so you need to learn Sanskrit. <laughs> so, no, I, otherwise somebody has to explain that to you, right? Okay. So, uh, once we are, means, one, means once we go through the Vedanta in detail, I would start a web session with that because... This is what I, Vikram Singh Tomar and I do every day. Like we do one hour Shankara's commentary. We go line so by I line. I tried looking up Shankara's commentary, uh, English translation, and there were so many, and I didn't know which one to pick up. If anything you, because see, the, the, the precise Sanskrit word, they do a loose, fussy English word. So, and it creates more confusion than the actual thing. So, this commentary, you need to study with a teacher. Uh, what I do is I got this three-year course with audio recording of Swami Dayananda. Okay. So that, but that is also in Sanskrit. He uses most of the time Sanskrit. So you need to follow that. So that's what uh, I personally use. But it is it is amazing how intelligent he was. How um, the skill of Shankara is always mind-boggling. By the way, today is Shankara's Jayanti. So, yeah. it's very important to remember that teacher because without that Shankara, this Gita would have been completely misinterpreted. Yesterday, I was studying a verse in, to his introduction and uh, he was dismissing the argument of these Purvapachas. Uh, Purvapachas means the one who are addicted to the ritualistic portion of the Veda. So, before Shankara, they used to quote Gita and say that, even the killing of animals in a sacrifice is justified because it is for dharma. How misinterpreted it is, right? So Shankara quoting the Gita, any such arguments, he dismisses it beautifully. So you can see that. Uh, and Shankara's style is very interesting. Uh, Shankara's style is, he initially state the problem. For example, if there is a Charvakas uh, putting forth a claim, he used to put for that claim in a manner satisfactory to them first he always asked them right do you agree this is what you are saying and once they agree he will uh, go and uh, break it with proper arguments so that is why shankara's intellect is so good <coughs> but we fail to even um, read and understand shankara and mind you, he wrote the commentary of Gita at the age of 17. And when did Shankaracharya pass away? Anybody 32. knows? 32, 32, at the age of 32. So, living a huge legacy of literature. Daivi Shesha Gunamayi Mama Maya Duratyaya Mami Vaye Prepadyante Maya me tam tarantite. So we in the previous verse we said I am not seeing the permanent in the world and I fail to see myself properly and it is the influence of these three gunas. So what is the means to cross over that? How do I see beyond these gunas and see me? For example, Let's borrow the, the, means let's see the, let's see the literal meaning and we will go and do some analysis. So, Devi Hesham Gunamai, this divine, 
gunas. From where these gunas came from, Krishna explains. Mama Maya Duratyaya. This came from my, my, my Maya only. And it is not easy for an ordinary being to see beyond this Maya. Because of this Maya. Because you see the world, but you fail to see the permanent things in the world. You, you, under, you feel about yourself, but you don't recognize your true identity. And this is because of this Maya. And Krishna admit that my Maya is not easy to understand and cross over. Then, Mameva ye prapatyande. So, the only way, the only way for you to get out of this Maya is Mameva ye prapatyande, Maya metam tarantite. The only way you can transcend this Maya, only way you can cross this Maya is only way. Mameva ye prapatyande. Take refuge in me or hold on to me. That is what it is. Get connected with me in the higher way. So that way you can cross this over. And he just introduced it and he is going to explain you how you can get connected with him. Right? That is not at explained. He just saying that by connecting to me in the higher form, you will be able to cross this Maya. But let me give you a beautiful example. A beautiful example, but the example has its own limitation. All the example has its own fault. So don't take it very literally. Just to understand the concept. Uh, so imagine we use this Sopna Drishtanda, the analogy of a dream. What was that? I am sitting in my bed and I was just picking Gina <laughs> as the example last week. So uh, Gina is doing a yoga class. So there is, but she is sleeping. But in her dream, she is conducting a yoga class. And in that yoga class, there is studio, there is mat, there is people, there is all the properties, there is light. All those things are there. And Gina herself is a character. Correct? So, yes. who exactly created that world? Gina. Gina. But the Gina in the dream, if it is not a lucid dream, I don't recognize it. Right? Today morning somebody was telling me at work that he had a dream that somebody spitted at him. Somebody was coughing and spitted at him. And he got, got up scared, then only realized it was a dream. So what happened? When it was not a lucid dream, right? My identity was different. Of course, I identified with myself. But in that identity, I was suffering for something which was happening in a different reality. So like that, right? So this entire world is created by Ishwara. So the person who spitted at this particular person, who created that person? The same person. The same Ishwara who created, right? In that case, who is the Ishwara? The person lying on the bed is the Ishwara. So that Ishwara created this guy as well as the person who spitted that guy. Right? It is That is the, exactly what is Maya. One explanation of Maya. So that happened in the dream, but um, he was suffering in the dream. Until he woke up, he was suffering. Correct? And if it was a lucid dream, if he had known that, yeah, this is only a dream. That is exactly what a lucid dream is. Then even though that fellow spits, he won't get scared. Correct? That spitting will happen in the dream, but he won't get scared. So like that, when we know our real identity, that this is a lucid dream. I am playing a role here. The whole world and around me is created by Ishwara. And I am also created by Ishwara. And my real nature is not this. The real nature is something different. And this is happening as if like a dream. So don't tell me that this is dream. That is exactly what the uh, fault of this example. This example just shows that a world that came from Ishwara, it exists and what happens? You fail to see the real identity. So once again, Krishna tells this guna is made of my Maya and this Maya comes from me because who created that universe? The person lying in the bed, the very fellow who <laughs> dreamt he created this universe. So we can say that that's a Maya. So, two definitions of Maya is one is called Vikshepa, the other one is called Avarana. 
some of, some of you might have heard this. Those who studied Upanishad, you would have come across this, right? Vikshepa is projection, ability to project. So Ishwara project this, projected this world from his power, right? So the material cause is Ishwara. Um, the, the intelligent cause is Ishwara. So people say that Brahman plus Maya. It is Maya is not separate from Brahman, correct? Maya is nothing but Brahman. The dream world is nothing but the other guy. Means the, the material cause is the other guy. The intelligent cause is that guy. So like that, Maya's, under the Maya's influence, you act uh, and you don't, means it is, it's not a lucid dream. You f suffer, you don't, you don't recognize your true identity. In the dream, what was his identity? In the dream, his identity was a person sitting in a crowded New York City, exposed to somebody, exposed for that spitting, right? But until and otherwise he doesn't know that identity, he is going to suffer. When he knows the identity, he may continue to see the dream. That is exactly what happens in a lucid dream. You see that somebody spits, but you are not scared because you know that your real nature is different. So that courage will be there. So Krishna is saying that, but for a normal dream, 99% of the dream, is that a lucid dream? It is in that dream you suffer. I had that experience, like uh, one day I saw a dream and I just woke up uh, actually crying because it was such a terrible dream. Uh, I know that Rajesh don't re see the dream, but those who see the dream <laughs> might have had this experience, right? So that's exactly what it is. So this is why in our Vedanta, they use this as a powerful teaching methodology called Sopna Drishtanta. As I said earlier, like what makes Vedanta different from the other uh, system is the teaching methodology, like Drik Drishya Viveka, Srishti Prakriya, uh, Sopna Drishtanda, uh, Ranju Sarpa Drishtanda. All these Drishtandas are very powerful and it, it follows a standard teaching methodology. So coming back, so this Maya, it came forth of me and it is not easy to cross this Maya. The only way to go beyond this Maya, the only way for you to see beyond that dream universe is know me, right? Think about that. The dreamer in me should know that the real me or the Ishwara who created that dream. The moment you know that, you go beyond that dream universe. So just like that, we are right now, we are bound, conditioned by time and space in this universe without knowing our real identity, without getting connected to the creator. And the moment you get connected with the creator who created the dream, what happened? Lucid dream means you have a connection with the creator, right? Isn't it? That's the beauty of this example. Lucid dream means you have a connection with the creator. And the moment you identify the creator, then the Maya stops hurting you, uh, stops uh, fooling you. So this Maya is symbolically represented in our Puranas as Mohini. Have you heard of the story of Mohini? Yeah. So Mohini came to these Asuras. What happened? The Asuras dropped the Amrita and run after Mohini. Amrita represents what? Immortality. Amrita represents the immortality. They forgot the Amrita and they went after the Mohini. So that is exactly what the Maya does to us. So that's why it's known as Maya Mohini. So this Mohini appears multiple times in the Purana. One to Pasmasura and uh, one to these Asuras. <coughs> so this story is beautiful. <coughs> so couple of points like, so Krishna frames an interesting problem, right? Our mind with the senses is attracted to sense objects because of the play of these three Gunas or Mayas. And Ishwara or the God is beyond these gunas. So we need somehow to pierce through this guna to contact Ishwara. We need somehow to pierce through this dream universe to get the real identity. Only by knowing that real identity, I can get out of the fears and worries and anxieties that is happening in the dream universe. So I am in this universe. I need to pierce through this constraint put forth by this universe. And I need to connect with my true identity. When I get connected with the true identity, what happens? My fear will disappear.
So what is the means for that? So, um, so what exactly is preventing us from contacting Ishwara? Because deluded by the modification of the mind, we are not able to recognize our identity with Ishwara and fail to see Ishwara in the world. So this is due to the Maya. So Krishna tells, Esha gunamai mama maya duratyaya. Indeed, this Maya of mine is difficult to cross. So mental modification born out of the Maya make it difficult to understand Ishwara. And what are the power of this Maya? It is Daivi Ishwara. This is supported by Ishwara. Because remember, the dream universe is supported by me who is lying on the bed. And Maya, what happens? The dream, dream universe veils my real identity. So that is the veils the Brahman or the absolute reality from me. And he, Asia, like what is the proof of this Maya? The simple proof of this Maya is even though I live in a world, theoretically I know that there should be some permanent subtractum behind the universe. It is not visible to me at this point of time. And then what happens? Gunamai, this Sattva, Rajas, Tamas, Maya is of the form, these three forms. And then Mama Maya, Krishna said, right? So the Maya is under my control. The dream universe is under the control of the sleeper. So all these things are some characteristics of Maya. One is the Maya is supported by Brahman. Without Brahman, there is no existence to Maya. Second thing is the Maya, what happens to Maya? What is the influence of Maya? The Maya typically veils the presence of Brahman. The third one is the Maya, um, the proof of Maya is because they veil the presence of Brahman, it makes difficult for an ordinary person to see the Ishura. And then the Maya consists of these three gunas, gunamai. It's mai means it is uh, the for modification of these three gunas. So uh, these three gunas, sattva, rajas and tamas. And then uh, it is mama maya. So Krishna tells that the Maya comes from me only. So this, this is the power of Maya. And the solution is, even though it is difficult, you can cross the Maya. So, ye maam, uh, those who seek me will get out of Maya. So, those who surrender to me, surrender means those who connect or prioritize me as the higher goal, the supreme being, will certainly cross the Maya. So, prapadyante means it, pra, it come from a root called pad means to attain. So, you need to attain your higher nature. So, in the case of that dreamer, lucid dream, the lucid dreamer recognize his identity with the person who is lying on the bed. So, that will put a suffering of all the issues created by the dream world. Just like that, when you cross that uh, constraint of the universe and get connected with the higher all our problems will vanish. And now Krishna is going to tell a little bit later, how can you connect with me properly? But couple of words of caution. So in this particular, this verse is misinterpreted by a lot of people. So this verse is misinterpreted by a group of Vaishnavites, first of all. I was about to ask you that about Prabhati. Yeah, Prabhati. Um, and also in the Kali Yuga, they are saying that Nama Sankirtanam total surrender to Bhagavan. Yeah, so, so even, Bhagavad, right? Where is, where is that fitting into this? <laughs> Nama Sankirtanam is not going to help you to cross directly. But the Nama Sankirtanam, there is a Kali Sandarno Upanishad. It is one of the Upanishads uh, in, accepted in the fold of this 108 Upanishads. So since you asked the question. So... Mm -hmm. This Upanishad tells in the Kali Yuga, meaning in the current age, the easy way is to chant Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. The mechanism is, when you sincerely chant this name of the Lord, what is going to happen? You forget to... The Chitta Shuddhi and the Chitta Stiti will come. And okay. when, when you have the Chitta Shuddhi and the Chitta Stiti is come, automatically, this means you, you will be exposed to this knowledge. So, if you are ignorant, no amount of prayer can solve that ignorance. The, the prayer will make you calm so that you can uh, pursue this knowledge. So, even these fanatics, what they say is, I don't know whether you experienced it. Like, this Hare Rama, Hare Rama, they change the order. Because they say that Krishna is superior than Rama. 
So they start with Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so uh, it is... I'm, I mean, say I'm not trying to denounce the prapatis or anybody for that matter. But Krishna, here whenever he used the term me, he is not talking about Krishna, the blue boy of Vrindavan. He is talking about the Brahman. Brahman. So his identity is Brahman. So that identity is the identity of Shiva. And that identity is the identity of Devi. So it's a complete misinterpretation of the Gita and Shankaracharya in his commentary he spends a few verses on this uh, topic so don't be fanatic the God can be called in any names why not father in heaven it is totally fine Allah it's all fine so I was reading a couple of verses from Quran because it is the uh, month of Ramadan uh, the first surah I was reading I was amazed actually brilliant so the first verse is called I salute to this Allah who is all merciful and then they go beyond and they understand that in detail right so they say that what exactly is the mercy you are talking the mercy because they say that every being is endowed with some mercy some kindness like I'm kind to okay a few people but my kindness and my mercy is limited by space like, for example, now I have, I'm in America, I will be more charitable. But if I was in a different place, that is limited. And also the time and also the circumstances. But he who can be completely merciful in all places and all time, and that is what is called as Allah. Allah means it's one who is to be worshipped. So that's only a name. It's like Bhagawan. So every scripture talks exactly the same thing. People may misinterpret and Try to, just like this verse can be misinterpreted as only Krishna is the God. The only way to cross over Maya is Krishna. If you chant Rama, it's gone. If you chant Shiva, oh my God, you'll get into hell. That is not the case. So Shankaracharya spent some time. Let's not be fanatic. Let's accept every tradition. Uh, I may call the God as Krishna, but that is totally fine. It is up to me. But somebody may call Allah. Somebody may call Father in Heaven. And somebody may call Devi. It doesn't matter. So this is how you can cross the Maya. And if you think that the, the Vaikuntha is a place and you need to reach Vaikuntha, understand that Vaikuntha is also Maya. Because it's a place. And if you think that God is in Kailash, Kailash is also Maya. Thank you so much for this clarification. It's, it's a point that I keep uh, coming back to all the time. Yep. The fanatics you were talking about, they even have a terminology for this called Nam Apratha. Correct. Like if you if you take the name of Shiva or some, right. and actually they are demigods. They are not even gods. So yeah. yeah. You're, so you're you're offending the name. Yeah. Uh, Rajaji, you were saying prapat prapati. What is that term? Uh, Bhuvanaji might be better to explain than me. So Bhuvanaji, you can give a. It's a it's a Vaishnava set. It's a Vaishnava samradha. Vaishnavas um, they always believe in prapati. So prapati means total surrender to Almighty. In that they involve a lot of rituals and uh, I that's what I was asking Rajuji, do they go beyond that? Because to they, me, they hurt themselves that, also. That they... Prabhati surrender to itself is only in the Bhakti Margam, right? Correct. I feel like they are Correct. in that level. Correct. So and there is something beyond that Bhakti level. Absolutely. So the bhak... Will they ever reach that? Of course, the, the sincere devotees may reach there. But for that you have to drop all these fanaticism because... <laughs> Without that, uh, they will be, uh, because you see, judge people and uh, that means their mind is not purely pure yet. But of course, when they do the bhakti, it will happen to them. And one more thing about these prapatis, again, I'm not criticizing them. I'm just making only an observation. I'm nobody to say that they are wrong and I'm right. Uh, they even hurt themselves in the process. Their bhakti is so, uh, they fast sometimes or they hurt their body. That's the body is a temple. You will see in the thirteenth chapter, and you are hurting the temple. <laughs> so, the, um, so now that you brought this thirteenth chapter, I know we'll we'll go elaborate later. But um, the people you said they're hurting, right? So there are people who take um, who go to Murugan Temple. They you know they put they put the um, veil yeah, yeah, yeah. down yeah. and um, they hurt themselves. Samakshanam is done by doing the Shanga Chakra stamping on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. And um, they go, the, they walk on the fire. So what is all that? Is that These necessary? are lower forms of bhakti. You will see this in Bhakti Sutra. 
um, of course their belief because when they walk over this canal they won't get burned right you can see because right. it's the power of the right. mind it helps them to focus a little bit but um, if you want to know god you have to go beyond all these things beyond, okay. because even in this chapter krishna tells four type of people approaches me some people i am the end goal for some people end goal is different i am only a means for their end goal right for some people their money and their <laughs> happy life is the end goal so they are like incapable in, yeah they are in artho jignasu artharthi jnani right so this is uh, what he tells like so one is that the major difference is that for some people i am the end goal for some people something else is the end goal but they want me to support <laughs> in their journey to the end goal and i help everybody krishna tells right so we'll see this in a little bit detail so a little bit of analysis of bhakti is coming and then the beautiful 12th chapter is coming which is the yeah. real elaboration of bhakti it just breaks lot of conventional rules on bhakti and what i don't understand is it is crystal clear in bhagavad gita but even people read and misinterpret gita that's it even i wonder how they do it yeah rajaji i had a question yeah so in the third point where ಪ್ರಪತ್ತಂದೆ prabatyande means to attain prabatyande prabatyande yeah prabatyande prabatyande means it comes from the root pad it means to attain so um, it is like the dreamer me right uh, the dream I, i am in that dream the dream character of me in my dream getting connected or attaining or crossing that dream world and getting identified with the sleeper the moment i understand that this is a lucid dream what happens the influence of the spell of maya goes away so please continue but i just wanted to clarify surrender okay. there means it is getting connected to that higher being that's it it's not like uh, some people say that doing the namaskaram the namaskaram is only a symbol surrender means i am i am moving beyond this world and i'm getting connected to that higher nature so i'm making this as the pro- the priority uh, this is a priority for me to know my higher nature so the jignasu bhakta which we are going to talk little bit later that that is the beginning and it will culminate with the jnani bhakta so these are the two levels of bhakti we are going to see in this chapter uh, later but please continue i just wanted to clarify that term because surrender uh, uh, I, is prabatyande right and i think in your clarification you gave me a lot of answers to what i was asking and yeah. what i was asking was the process of attaining this connection with ishwara mm-hmm. isn't that exclusively a process of maya as claimed by you know iskon and you know uh, even the vaishnavites and so many margas they say it's exclusively bhakti and none of the other yeah. uh, yan or that's or, the, that's their belief right so uh, i i mean they believe in that and they believe that the bhakti can cross them uh, bhakti definitely it is going to help them because as i said the bhakti can definitely bhakti is a yoga nothing more than that the bhakti as a yoga what it does is it uh, calms their mind that is number one the chitta sthiti it will give and also the true bhaktas the true bhaktas right the true bhaktas what they do is they uh, actually their chitta shuddhi is also happening so when you have that transformation happening i am sure they will be exposed to this knowledge because krishna tells at that point of time i will come and help them <laughs> so uh, again I, i i mean there is no logical explanation because here in our process the study of vedanta the it's very systematically explained this is that's what the difference between a faith and a teaching so here uh, krishna is giving you teaching you he is not asking you to believe me he is saying that uh, listen to me and understand me that's the difference